I think you all know me. Got it. Um, but just in case, I'm Barbara Champo. I'm a current New York, uh, a current Crew New York director, past president, and chair of Crew New York's new member engagement and empowerment committee. On behalf of the committee and Crew New York, uh, we thank you for joining us today for our Rediscover Crew New York event. This features an all-star panel of Crew New York business generators, as well as a roundtable discussion among some of our exceptional leaders. If you've not already done so, please rename yourself with your first and last name and ideally your company name so we know who you are. Please also turn your video on if possible. As I already mentioned, it's really the best way to connect on this platform. Um, and it's also better for the screenshots that are gonna be taken uh, randomly. Uh, before we get started, uh, let's recognize and give a big thank you to our sponsors for their longstanding loyalty uh, and their new loyalty, because we do have some new sponsors, um, and their generous support of Crew New York. They enable us to serve you. Um, at the Zenith level, we have FNF Family of Companies. At the Gold level, CBRE, TREP, and Kimpton. At the Silver level, we have... Uh, Ackerman, Anch, and the Durst Organization, which is a new one, welcome. JB and D, Jack Resnick and Sons, Langen, Len Lease, another new one, thank you, Nyetta, and Zetlin and DiChiara. Bronze level, we have Hannigan Construction, Calico, Silverstein Properties, and another new one, Valley Bank. And finally, at the friend level, we have the Advanced Group, uh, First Nationwide Title, another new one, Shawmut and W.B. Wood. Um, we also have our first ever DEI champion sponsors, Shampoo Law Group, Hannigan Construction, and Shawmut. And finally, many thanks as well to these generous past Crew New York presidents who have so far donated to our scholarship fund for 2022. Through their generosity, we are, um, uh, it makes it possible for us to provide scholarships to New York City and surrounding area students. <clears throat> Um, we have an amazing event today that uh, is certain to provide you with lots of helpful information and interesting insights. So our focus is most almost entirely on our speakers, but we are also excited to let you know that today's event launches our new Bridge to Member Inclusion program. It's comprised of a variety of events, activities, and initiatives throughout the year designed to support and encourage your inclusion and engagement within Crew New York and empower you to unlock the value of your membership. It will also enable you to better understand and experience the tools, benefits, and opportunities available through Crew New York. So many of our members uh, have expressed um, some frustration and some uncertainty about how to do that. So this year, we are gonna make sure you know how to take advantage of every single opportunity and utilize every single tool that's available to you through Crew New York. We've conducted extensive research uh, over the past year, and by far our members join and remain in Crew New York to build and leverage business opportunities. But many of you are not sure how to do that effectively, uh, at least in this environment. Unless and until more women bring significantly more revenues to their company's bottom lines, women will remain blocked by the glass ceiling and stuck in the compensation gap. So I'm delighted to introduce to you now our member business to business panelists, all Crew New York members, and all of whom have very successfully leveraged Crew New York and Crew Network to develop business opportunities and build their business and a quality network. We have Jennifer Carey, founder, CEO, JLC, <clears throat> environmental consultants, a past Crew New York president, as well as a past network board member and a foundation chair. Christine Schippernoy, executive vice president, real estate, construction, hospitality, and nonprofits for USI Insurance Services. She is also a past Crew New York president and a past network board member. And we have Caitlin McDonough, managing partner, Conway Farrell, Curtin and Kelly, PC. We will have a brief, brief Q&A period at the end of their discussion. So please put any questions for our speakers in the chat as they arise, and we will get to as many as possible. There we go. Um, uh, so let's kick this off. I'm gonna start with you, Jennifer. Please describe a specific business opportunity you gained through Crew or Crew New York. Just one specific example so that our guests and, and um, 
can can better understand and see by example why you think the uh, network is so important. Thank you, Barbara, and thanks uh, for putting this together, Crew New York, everyone involved. I'm not sure who is ma mainly responsible, but these kind of programs have really kept me connected during all the things COVID in the last two years, so I appreciate that. And I appreciate the opportunities to say hi to everybody this morning. My experience with Crew, I've been a member, gosh, probably some of you weren't even born yet. Um, I was a, I've was been a member since like 19, I was 24 when I started my business. I moved to New York, started a business within a year, and was just throwing things at the wall, BOMA, IFMA, crew. It was called ARU at the time. I was the member of ARU at the time. Anyway, I was doing all these things. And what I found is when I um, actually buckled down and, and started to, to, to consistently go to, to crew events, that is when um, my opportunities began to arise. Because I, for a while, I was on the fringe. So I say I was a member since like about 1995, perhaps. And I didn't get my first good piece of business. It took me a, a, a several years. But I also was not as engaged as I should have been because I was trying to do all things to all people and be all things and go into BOMA and all these things. So anyway, when I finally got to the point where I was heavily getting involved with the committee and I started to make the friends of the other people on the committee, that's when I made my connection, which then ended up be, you know, giving me in consulting fees over the past 10 or 15 years, probably almost $2 million just from one connection that I made. $2 million in consulting fees for a company like mine, which is a a woman-owned business is, is a fairly substantial thing. It might not be a lot to some of you people out there because you're in a much bigger you know, company. But for me, it was really helpful and it was really important because that company that hired me as their consultant because they had a problem and the woman said, hey, you know, we, we had a problem with our past consultant. We'd like to interview people. Would you like to come and interview? And I was like, of course, you know, and that's how my opportunity within Crew arose because it was a fellow crew member who said, you know what? we know what you do and we need what you do. So why don't you come and interview? And we were the ones who won. So it didn't, you know, it got me through the door and it just got me, my crew membership is paid for like forever. I could, I could be a crew member forever and never, you know, we worried about my dues, but I think that being a member is so important for that reason alone, plus all the other things we'll talk about later. Uh, Jen, just um, for a follow-up, specifically, how did you meet this person? Did you meet them? I met him at a luncheon. Event? I met him at one of the in-person lunches. Okay. I remember handing my card to her. She was with uh -huh. a big accounting firm and we just became friends. And then next thing I know, I was on a committee because she saw my name and she, with you know, her. We, we connected. Yes. With her. And I was on the committee with her. And then there, and I think that also put me on the trajectory to become the president of crew New York because wow. those people got to know me from that committee. And then they put me in, into more of a, a leadership role. And I got more and more chances uh -huh. to show that I would uh -huh. do what I said I was going to do and not just be like a flake. And, you know, that's also part of it. You have to do what you say you're going to do, of course. We all have to do that in our work and, and business lives. And so when I was able to show that, I guess people felt confident enough to me and felt that I was going to be a good enough representative to, to become the president of our, of our August chapter, which is the oldest networking chapter for real estate women in the United States or in the world, actually. So we were pretty cool over here in New York. There you mm -hmm. go. Thank you, Jennifer. Mm -hmm. Christine, what about you? Tell us about a specific business opportunity you've gained. And I know you've gained many over the years. Yes, I have. That's true. And I have to say, very much like Jen, um, I started coming to Crew in 2006. And it was after I was inwardly facing in senior management at Wells Fargo for many years and became a salesperson. And I had to pick a, pick a field, if you will, um, and had a lot of experience in real estate. So I joined Crew and I figured now if I'm going to be in sales, I can meet other women and it'll be a little bit easier. I tried a bunch of other groups like Jen and really thought that the women at Crew were really ideal for me to network with. And like Jen, the first year I didn't engage, I didn't get much out of it. And then I joined the committee and I met a few people and I did what I said I was going to do, made a lot of friends to this day. Many of my life, you know, career long friends are women at Crew. Um, and during that period of time, it wasn't a waste of time while I was waiting to get the big deals that came down the pike because I learned a lot of soft skills, like how to negotiate, how to talk to people. I gained confidence. I learned how to speak publicly. I learned not have, I learned to not be afraid to speak up in a boardroom when I was the only woman there. Mm -hmm. Crew gave me that confidence to just be able to stand up and and show what I knew and where sex didn't really matter when I was in a room. Um, Couple of things crew taught me, a, a couple of crew deals that I won. One was I was introduced by Beth Safante, who is actually a long-term member of crew. And she is 
a very big advocate of bringing women to the table. And she brought me to the table to this large New York construction firm, uh, real estate and construction firm, who didn't call me back the first year. <laughs> and the next year, she set up a breakfast with the woman that was a general counsel there. And I didn't get a call that year because COVID hit. And this most previous year, Beth reached out to her and said, hey, you remember Christine, blah, blah, blah. She'd really like to get involved in your account. Um, fast forward, the woman put my name in the hat. She wasn't really that involved. She just said, I know this woman through crew and WX and I only hear great things. And fast forward, we saved them over a million dollars with their insurance the first year that we were engaged with the company, which made Beth look great, who's your legal partner. It made those general counsel internally looked great. It was, it wasn't like, oh, here's Christine and I just won business. Like we had to prove ourselves. It took a couple of times up at bat and we got it. Um, Cruz also helped me build my business by learning everything about commercial real estate. I thought I knew a lot about commercial real estate when I joined Crew, And then I quickly realized that there was about a hundred different kinds of jobs in real estate. And I really <clears throat> didn't know as much as I thought I knew. And what I learned through crew helped me be a better problem solver for my clients. And one of my clients that I met through crew, I was doing a large ground up construction of a condo for them, was doing a deal in Texas. And they heard the person's boss reached out to me and said, you remember this like crew thing? It's national. Like I have this big problem in Texas and I'm in New York and I don't know anybody in Texas. Can you help me? And they were looking to get some land rezoned. I was able to reach out through the network. I sent an email. Now they have the project board, which they didn't have then. I sent an email to eight different attorneys in that area. I got seven calls back within an hour, I would say. And she spoke to three women who all gave her great advice and they moved their project forward. One of the women she ended up hiring. So I became like in this invaluable resource to the client. This other person got work. It's like a win, win, win. Everything you do with crew. You know, Christine, you highlighted uh, two things that I think are very important for everyone to understand. First of all, was the fact that business opportunities and using uh, crew New York and the network to build your business is more about than just the deal. Although the deal is very important to be true. Um, and that is you look great in front of a client. That's such an intangible benefit that it's hard to really quantify, but it, it, I'm sure it made a great difference in your relationship. The other thing um, I think you underscored was you've got to follow up. You know, the, 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 um, the I guess, engagement that you finally got through Beth, it, it was, it sounds like there were a number of, uh, you know, follow up, a number of staying in touch and that kind of a thing. And so it's so important not to give up. It's so important, you know, you don't want to become a, a pain in the butt, if you will, allow me. Um, but you do want to stay top of mind in a very professional um, and courteous way. And, and sounds like that's what was going on there, Christine. Is that right? Yes, it was. And it was great having her advocate. And she knew I'd do a great job because we've worked on the deals together. So it helped her. It helped me. It helped, it helped everybody. Everybody won. Well, like, like Jennifer said uh, as well, uh, you, you, you know, building that trust relationship takes time and it takes working together and it takes people mm -hmm. getting to know you. Uh, and both of you have accomplished that to an extent through your active involvement. Um, Caitlin, where's Caitlin? Um, right here, I think. Uh, Caitlin, um, tell us, you have a very interesting connection with Crew, uh, New York and Crew Network in terms of business opportunities. But Tell us um, uh, about a specific business opportunity you gained or provided through Crew. Sure. Well, first, thank you so much for, for having me. This is a great panel, and I think it's going to be really helpful to new and even existing members. I became a Crew member, I think it was 2016, so a bit of a newbie compared to uh, Jennifer and Christine here. But I was fortunate in that it was pre-COVID, so I was able to do a lot of those in-person luncheons and the breakfasts and whatnot. Although I will say I've done a lot of those via Zoom in the last two years, and it's not the same, but it's also still, in my opinion, very helpful. And you still do get um, the level of interaction that you're kind of looking for at those events. So, um, but in terms of a business opportunity, I'm an attorney representing lenders, and I had a deal that was actually spread out over four different states. 
um, throughout the country, Texas, Alabama, Michigan, and New York. And I'm not, um, I can't practice in those, all those states. I'm not admitted in those jurisdictions. So I had to reach out. And, you know, luckily the, I told the client, I said, listen, I have a network of people I can, I can access. And I reached out via the crew network message board looking for, you know, kind of a, a in search of attorneys um, in those various jurisdictions. And similar to Christine's experience, I had separate emails, I had phone calls, I had people responding to me within yeah hours, um, maybe, you know, a few stragglers within a day or two, but I had probably at least six to eight different suggestions within each of those jurisdictions. And then honestly, I reached out to, you know, a few of those, but I also looked on their Krubas profile on the crew network website, just to get a sense of exactly what these people do. Does, is this a good fit? You know, then I would maybe look on their, their firm website, that kind of thing. But I did start on the Krubas network website just to see. And interestingly, some people had better profiles than others. It wasn't necessarily a deal breaker, but it, it helped me get a sense of kind of who might be the best person to kind of work with or, or whatnot. So that to me was, was a nice um, starting point at the very least. And then um, to be honest, I've had deals in probably four or five other states. And I think I've used crew to help me find a local council for every state except one. And that was New Jersey because I have friends in New Jersey because it's really not that far. <laughs> um, but other than that, it's been an invaluable resource because we've had, you know, clients saying, well, can you help us with this? And my answer is, well, yes. And now I have, you know, if there's ever a deal in Alabama or Florida, I know exactly who I'm going to call. And actually for the Florida person, I've had, I think, three separate deals with her because, you know, she's actually moved firms within that time period. But I've stayed with her saying, you know, I have this good business relationship with her. We've built over the last, I guess it's probably three or four years at this point and, you know, developed that and built on that over the past few years. Um, so that's been very nice <laughs> to have that network of people you kind of not automatically trust, but, you know, are going to be helpful, engaged. Um, and everyone had great suggestions of, you know, kind of how to do that. No one. Um, not one person was difficult or, or, or whatnot, you know, it was always a, a positive experience. So it sounds like you were more of a, a you pr provided a lot of people with business, but the business opportunity or the business benefit to you was, again, like Christine, you looked really terrific, uh, you know, to your client, hey, I know all these people around the country, you know, so you can give me anything because I can handle it. Exactly. So yeah. that sounds terrific. For those of you that uh, are not aware, uh, when Caitlin mentioned the message board, she's talking about the members only forum, which we're going to touch on at another time. And she also underscored very nicely. Thank you very much, Caitlin. Um, <laughs> the importance of having uh, a very up to date and complete uh, crew biz profile. We're going to touch on that in uh, a few minutes. Um, on the members only forum, Christine, I wondered, you know, do you refer to it often to see who's looking for referrals or who is providing referrals or who needs somebody? Uh, tell me yeah, about the nice thing about it. the message board. It comes out very early in the morning. So as soon as I log on, it's kind of in the top of my email. And I look at it every day because it's short, it's concise. And many times, it, even if it doesn't apply to me, if I knew Caitlin and what she's doing, I may say, hey, did you see this? Or to Jennifer or to another member. And I find when you give referrals, you get referrals. And, and that's just another way to reach out and touch somebody and reminds them of what you do too. And you help them. So I look at it every day. It's really quick. It's like just bullets. If you're interested in what it says, you click on it and you go in and you can see more information. But I kind of know in 30 seconds, like, get through it and move on if, if it's nothing that, you know, I don't know, I don't have a contact or anything to add. And we never talked about this during our pre-talks, but we, I also got business from that same, same Oh, way. did you, Jen? Tell us. Well, it was from, um, from a New Orleans member. Uh, she was doing some work in New York. She needed help. She was on the message board. We actually ended up having a long-term relationship and she sold her company recently. So she's out of the business, but it was, and also it's a great resource for me because I'm also going to one day sell my business or, I don't know what we're going to do with it. We're trying to figure our exit strategy out right now because, you know, I've been doing this a long time and can't do this forever. And I'm not going to live forever. So anyway, those are the kind of things that are the intangibles that you almost can't put a price tag on that are so 
one of the reasons why this is my my favorite organization to be a member of. Well, yeah. I'll chime. Oh. oh, go ahead, Kayla. I was going to chime in and say, um, I know I've reached, I've seen bullet points come up and said, okay, this doesn't necessarily help me, but I have clients who right. are lenders and this person's looking for a lender in this particular subset, you know, in this industrial, whatever. And I said, oh, you know what? I'm just going to reach out to them and say, hey, you might want to know about this. Hey, this is something you should be interested in or look into, even though, you know, it's not my purview necessarily, but it's it's nice to be able to just send that kind of information out there to people. Oh, and I wanted to say we say we used to say something on network, and Christine, I don't know if they still said it because you've gone on the board after I rolled off the board. They used to say there's never a cold call in crew. Right. So no matter what you need, it's a warm call. So it, you'll get the calls back. You'll you'll look like a rock star helping another person. I know that people like for I see Julie Ryman right at the top of the thing. I'm from Durst. Hi, Julie. I know that Durst is, is a big developer here, but there's people coming in to do work here and they may want to be in a Durst building. They may want, you know, you never know where that's what, the, what what's going to happen when you meet people and crew because there's just so many different opportunities and you don't know what's exactly going to happen. So keep your mind open, you know, in your ears. Thank, Thank you, Jen. Christine, you really were going to add. I was just saying if you are building a business in New York or anywhere, being a connector is so critical and yep. a problem solver. And crew gives you like the Verizon network, if you will, you know, if you could vision that old commercial, all these people that's in your Rolodex, God, that's an old word that you can call that could help you or your customers. So coincidentally, Christine, we have Lucia Diana, who's with Verizon on with us today. Perfect. So that was a great commercial. There it really go. edifies what crew is. It there you go. <laughs> crew is. Um, but again, you know, you've all just underscored yet again that, you know, the, one of the key components of building a successful business is all of the intangible ways you add value to clients and potential clients um, mm -hmm. that, that will then, you know, enhance what you bring in. Um, I want to address now for a moment, because we often hear this in Crew New York, um, you know, what does the global network have to offer to me? My business is local. So who of the, uh, Christine, you have any thoughts about that, Jen? Well, business is local. New York is, as we feel, is the center of the universe. <laughs> and all good deals happen here. So companies aren't all from here. They're from other places and they're coming to New York and they're going to need lawyers and insurance brokers and environmentalists and, and everybody title, everybody that's part of the deal. Or like Jen mentioned, they might need space and maybe an introduction to Julie would be exactly I'll what we it. need so and i'll give you an example business too sorry christine i didn't mean to cut you off i thought you were done it's okay i'll give you an example i don't know anyone anyone here who knows michelle cooper michelle cooper was on the board when i was the president of crew michelle cooper's husband got relocated because he's in the finance world to london she was with columbia she was a project manager doing huge projects so but she was had her young kids so she just didn't get a job in london but guess what we started to do the uk chapter Michelle Cooper is now helping us. I think she, they just opened Paris this week. And I saw her in Paris with Wendy doing the, the opening of our new Paris chapter. So those kind of, I mean, Michelle Cooper, I don't know when she's coming back to New York, but there's, she's not. we are, our members move everywhere. They go everywhere. And, and you never know when a bank, in, like I did a lot of, after 9-11, I did a lot of work for a bank out of London that owned property around 9-11, around ground zero. So you never know. I mean, that wasn't a crew thing, but you never know when that's going to occur again. So when something like that, an opportunity for meeting people in, in this kind of milieu will be able to afford you. You don't, you don't know what the outcome will be. So I know a lot of people here in this, on this call do international stuff. I mean, Rachel, you work for a German bank. You know, you, now, now you're doing your own thing. But I mean, you have a lot of international connections as well. And you know how important they are, as well as any other company on here that I, that I could see that does work internationally that could benefit from that as well. Yeah, I think um, you, you both underscore, Kayla, unless you had something you wanted to add, you know, um, the world and business are, you know, undeniably global at this point and, and increasingly so, um, but real estate is local, um, you know, and you're going to see more and more companies coming into this city. Um, forgive me if I'm mistaken, Dan LaFrisco, but you know, Dan opened the New York office of Kimley Horn, um, which did not have a presence here before. Um, and I'm sure you probably reached out to crew members or some somehow, or maybe you will. So you're looking to build a New York presence through your crew connections. Um, so, you know, you never know who's going to, uh, you know, whose executives want to, you know, want to have, you know, their new brand new multi-million dollar townhouse redone inside, or, you know, you just, you just don't know. 
Um, one of the other things we get, uh, and then I'm going to uh, break for a few chat questions um, for a moment. But one of the other questions, you know, we get um, from Crew New York members is, well, what is the value to me of the network, particularly the bigger network, if I if it's if it's not my job to bring in clients? Um, do you have any thoughts about that, Caitlin or Christine or yeah. Jennifer? Um, no. I personally, I'm not great speaking in front of people, <laughs> Zoom or otherwise. Yes, you are. Cool. I, I beg to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe I'm getting better, but I think part of that is through crew because I've done a few of these events now. I was a member spotlight a few months ago. You know, I've been involved in different ways and it's it definitely has helped you um, or helped me, I should say, um, kind of get some of those public speaking skills and also learning, uh, well, learning Zoom <laughs> at the very beginning. That was one of my skill sets or skills that I didn't really have, you know, kind of the soft skills too, that you might not necessarily want to try out in your, in your profession as uh, for the first time. Um, so that, that's very helpful. I think crew makes you a better professional by understanding all of the different aspects of real estate. I have a friend that I met at crew, Camille Renshaw. She's a dynamo and she used to stand in lunch in line, the lunch line behind me. And she would give me her 30 second or 20 second thing of what she does. And I said to her one day, I don't have any idea what you're talking about. Can we go get coffee? And could you just explain to me what you do? So she explained her business to me and it was really rather simple when she gave it to me instead of her elevated pitch, she said, listen, Chris, you're FedEx. What do you need to be successful? I was like, I don't know, guys in trucks. So <laughs> she said, yeah, but you need a distribution centers all over the country and they cost $500 million to build. If you have all your money in those distribution <laughs> centers, you can't get guys in trucks. So they build them the way they need them. And then I sell them to investors and then they rent them back for 20 or 30 years. And it's a great investment because you have a good tenant in there and they're paying their rent on time. And then there's like, you know, you get your little vig on top. So everybody makes money and everybody's happy. It's like, you, that's what you should say online. Um, so fast forward, I have a client that was building 35 geriatric psychiatric hospitals in the Midwest. And I was working on their d &O insurance, quite boring. And I was in their office and they were explaining to me that they were going to have to close their doors and go out of business. And they were on like their fifth or sixth hospital. And they had several in various stages of, of being built. And I said, well, what's going on? And they explained to me that their cash was all tied up in these projects and that their banks had turned off their lines of credit because they weren't generating revenue because the way hospitals open, it takes a long time before Medicare or Medicaid could pay. So they had no income coming in. They had two, two or three operating hotels, several hundred employees that all this stuff in the middle of being built. So I said, hey, have you ever heard about sale lease back? Let me get my friend Camille on the phone. And they're like, no, really get her on the phone. So I got her on the little tripod in the conference room. She flew out the next week, sold all their finished hospitals and they are still in business. And we're on like our 15th hospital. And it, sa it saved their business and it was real value add. And it was like learning about a different aspect of commercial real estate that I knew nothing about. And, you know, it's all about connecting with people and just keeping your mind open to just learning and learning and learning. And, you know, you just I wonder, I wonder how many hospitals, those hospitals of people with COVID, they say, I wonder how many people those hospitals saved. So you kept hospitals open too, that were super important to the yeah. communities they were yeah. in. So that's even more important. But it's me. without crew, you would never learn that stuff. You, well, so not only would things. you never learn it, but, but as you mentioned, she's a crew member. Right. Mm -hmm. So you connected her to the opportunity again, kind of, you know, giving opportunities to get opportunities back. Um, and, and you're right. I mean, that sounds like an exciting, uh, exciting situation. Um, I want to take a question or two, though, um, from our chat uh, audience. And I have a couple of private ones as well. So um, you've all spoken about benefits you've gained through crew New York relationships or crew network relationships or both. How long did it take you to, to, to de develop that relationship or to build that relationship that yielded the response or, or the benefit that you were looking for? And thanks, Sarah uh, Marsh, Sponsorship Committee Chair, for that. I would say two or three Who wants years. to take that? Christine, you want to take that? I think about two or three years. I mean, it, it's especially for what I do, insurance is a very long sales cycle. So 
It takes a while to gain trust with people so that they will feel confident to introduce you to whoever you need to be introduced to to get the deal done because they're going out on a limb and they don't want to look bad. So they make sure that they, men don't do that though, which is very unusual. Men will be like, yeah, Johnny, he's good at that. Call my friend Johnny, is his card. Women don't do that. Women really have to feel very comfortable that they're going to look good when they refer you. So I think it's like a multiple sales cycle. Like you have to go through garnering the trust of the person that's going to recommend you. You know, it just takes longer. Um, so another another question from one of our uh, uh, our audience, Rebecca Long. Thank you. Um, I'm going to ask Caitlin, but uh, Jan or Christine, if you want to chime in as well, you know, what is the biggest takeaway or best advice you received when you started learning to network or having to learn to network? Caitlin, you want to, to kick that off? Let's see. The best advice, I, I guess, is A, that you, you do have to spend the time. It's not just, oh, I met so-and-so and therefore I got their card and now we're we're, we're best friends and, you know, we're going to have something you do. You have to follow up and set up a lunch, set up a coffee, set up something and, and keep it going. Um, which I know, I think Christine, you know, um, touched on before, but it, it's, it, it takes time, it, you know, and, and real effort. And you just have to keep, keep kind of plugging along and you never know quite what's going to stick and what might not, but it's all worth pursuing because you're learning something no matter what, even if it doesn't end up saying, oh, look, I got a great client out of it, but maybe you, you learned something else that you can, you know, build on <coughs> at the kind of, and I think the biggest thing is just keep, keep trying because you never know when it's going to kind of hit. I so think the persistence and the investment is what we've we've heard. Christine, I'm sorry, what were you going to say? One thing we didn't touch on is like the mentoring that goes on just because of what kind of organization we are. I know in my career, I've had a lot of things happen that the women and crew were the ones that I reached out to, to say, hey, how would you handle this? Like this guy's being a jerk or like, this is what's going on in my company. Like you can't always talk to your boss or a peer in your own company about what's going on or if you want to change directions of where you're going. And I think being part of crew, you got all these people that you become friendly with that are like your built-in mentors that you can go to and have lunch with and kind of shoot the breeze with about how to solve the issue. No judgments, no judgments. Exactly. We, I want to and I would chime in with and, that. Hold on, Jen. Oh, Jen, sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, we have to quickly close this out. Um, and, and I want to get to the last question and, and, and ask you to address it, if you don't mind, Jennifer. Um, and that is, um, how often are you getting business from uh, from the broader crew network outside of New York? Um, and is it just through using Cruvis? And I know for a fact it's not. So why don't you tell us about that, Jen? Well, I just was on a call with JLL doing our presentation to this big thing. They're, they're, they're going to be re developing a property and we're on the team. But I got that lead from Mildred Tolentino, who is a crew member, or is, if, if she's not a crew member, she's joining soon. But she's one of the people that um, recently gave me a piece of business, which was very lo lovely. But I just wanted to say to add what for is you get out what you put in. And I, in the beginning, when I was throwing all those things against the wall, I wasn't putting anything in really that was substantial. I was just kind of showing up to meetings and then, you know, listening and then maybe meeting a few people and giving a card, showing up and throwing up and ever. And, and, and that's not going to work. You got to be there and you got to be more consistent. And you got to, I think, I didn't realize in the very beginning, like Kate, Chris, you did a two or three years. That's great. Caitlin, yours is pretty fast too. Mine, it took me a couple, it took me many years because I wasn't, I was, a, I was a little bit shy, even though people who know me go, what? Like you're, you're a shy person. I'm like, I'm still a little introverted. I think that the public speaking that Caitlin talked about, it, it helped me become a better public speaker and not be afraid. And also aging out and not being, not caring what people think anymore is much, much better for me because that way you're not afraid to do the ask. You're not afraid because it's like, it, all they can do is say no. So anyway, that was what I would say. And also my, 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 my lead time was very long and I saw Sarah March had asked that question. So it took me a long time to get my first one, Sarah, but then slowly and then, and then it builds. You build it, you build it. Yeah, exactly. Um, I wanna thank you, um, Jennifer, um, Christine. Caitlin, that was really helpful for me. Uh, so uh, hopefully it was as helpful to the others. Um, we um, are now going to move on. Um, you may not be aware, some of you anyway, that when you join Crew New York, you get two memberships for the price of one because you also become a member of Crew Network as you heard us discuss earlier. Um, 
It's a, it's a global organization of over 12,000 commercial real estate professionals representing nearly all disciplines of which over 72% have given a business referral to another crew New York, uh, excuse me, crew member during the past 12 months. Think about that number. That's where you wanna focus your efforts. I'm willing to bet you don't get that number in many other organizations out there. Um, one of the most important things you need to do though, to make the most of your crew New York and network memberships is to create that crew biz profile and upload your headshot. I gotta tell you, I have not referred business to people simply because they didn't take the time to put their headshot up there. Uh, sounds trivial, but uh, as Caitlin mentioned, you know, when when you're looking for a difference um, that matters uh, anyway so that you can be found um, uh, and connected through the crew biz community directory um, we will provide more information and guidance about completing that profile to those who need it as well as about the crew biz community and other crew network tools and opportunities in the upcoming bridge to member inclusion activities that i mentioned in the meantime, we are excited to announce today the creation of our Member Inclusion Circle Pilot Program. This is primarily for new members, um, although because of COVID last year, all members joining since January 2021 will be invited to participate. This Inclusion Circle will consist of uh, four to six monthly modules beginning in April, and they'll be focusing on Crew New York and Crew Network providing training education and development on utilizing the tools available and taking advantage of the opportunities provided, including committee service. We will also build on our B2B panel's advice by sharing business goals, needs, asks, and offers within this smaller group so that our new members will begin developing their crew New York network within the network um, and, and get comfortable in this zone of smaller group. One of the things many of you know already, and these modules will underscore, and Christine, Caitlin, and Jen just mentioned, is the critical role active participation in Crew New York plays in deriving your member value and building your uh, business opportunities together. As you observed, uh, working together accelerates developing those quality relationships to build the trust and get to the referral a lot sooner than the two years. It also provides leadership development and opportunity. We have 10 standing full-time committees this year in which 75 of our members participate. Through involvement on a committee, you will collaborate with many of these other members on a common goal, building our community and creating opportunities together. As I mentioned, committee engagement also provides leadership development and opportunity as, as everybody just talked about. It is my great pleasure now to present a roundtable discussion among some of Crew New York's exceptional committee leaders for their thoughts and experiences on the value of engagement. Leading that discussion is Farrah Forbes, property manager, Windsor Communities, who joined Crew New York last May. It's been less than a year, but I feel I've known her for many years already, and it's through that working together towards a common goal. Um, we will have another brief Q&A period at the end of their discussion, so please put any questions for these speakers in the chat as they go, and, get, and we'll get to as many as possible. So, Sarah, let's kick this off um, with a question to you, and then you can take it over. Um, tell us what committees you've joined and what roles you hold on them, and why did you join a committee in the first place? In, in whatever order you like. Sure. <laughs> Thank you, Barbara. Um, I'll first start with just a quick introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to our first ever Bridge to Member Inclusion event. Um, a little bit about me. I am a property manager for Windsor Communities, which is a multifamily property management company based out of Boston. We own about 130 multifamily properties across 21 markets. As Barbara mentioned, I joined Crew about 10 months ago. And my reasons for joining were primarily to enhance my leadership skills and build my own professional network to help prepare myself for a career transition into asset management later on down the line. As far as the committees I am on, it's quite a few. So, so far I am serving as a team leader for the Bridge to Member Inclusion team of the Me Committee. 
I am also the vice chair of the Young Professionals Committee and a member of the CNMR and the EI committees. So oh, I, I missed that. Sound... I missed one. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Um, I know that sounds like a lot. And for our new members, I don't want you guys to feel as if that's the expectation. <laughs> we don't expect that. Maybe I'm just a crazy person, but I personally love what CREW stands for and want to do my part in contributing to its mission. And that's in helping advanced women in CRE, including myself. One of the best pieces of advice I got when I first joined from other members was to join a committee to get the most out of my membership. And I do truly feel as if I am getting my value here. Um, it's definitely helping me to stretch and to grow professionally. So thank you, crew. And I'm really excited for this opportunity to be leading this portion of our panel discussion. So enough about me, I want to go ahead and introduce some of our other Crew New York committee leaders today. We have Annie Garcia, who's an agency sales rep with Stuart Title, Claire Gondon, project manager with JDS Development, Nayada Lucci, senior compliance manager with Lend Lease, Rachel Merva, principal with RM Consulting, and Julie Ryman, portfolio relationship manager with the Durst organization. So I will go ahead and jump right into our discussion. I'll start with you, Annie, not to put you on the spot, but I want to ask each of you one question to jumpstart this. Uh, please tell us how long you've been a Crew New York member, describe your current Crew New York role, and why you made the decision to get involved. Okay. So I joined Crew, it was my last, well, before I joined Crew, the last event that we had in person was in February of 2020. And then I joined Crew officially in April. So things were pretty much up in the air, I think, for a lot of people. So at first, I just like sat back and I was just trying to take it all in and understand. And I was very grateful for the fact that it wasn't just me, but I felt like everybody was pretty much in that uncertainty mode and there was a lot of support which i absolutely loved from the beginning there were so much so it wasn't just something that was told to me before i joined it was something that i could see as a fly on literally i was like a fly on the wall like very quiet and uh i saw so much support and so much positive reinforcement between these women it was like amazing to me and um so i obviously i stayed quiet for a little bit and then i joined uh the membership community i was like let's you know, as, as somebody in title insurance, it's a very small community and it's one of those things where it's like, so I was like, I have membership. I get to see who's where when they join and start to network there. So I, I felt like that was um, something. And let's see what other, I'm part of the um, Young Professionals Committee as well. Again, I'm just trying to get in as much involvement and as much as I can out of everything. And somebody that is as quiet as I am, I felt like, I try to surround myself with people that are, you know, that are going to get me out of my comfort zone and get me out of my shell and actually doing what I'm supposed to be doing, which is that working. So, and it's been, it's worked out so far. So actually as early as this January, I signed on another agent. It was actually referred to by somebody from crew. So, I mean, that's, so awesome because the, I call it the courtship period It's a very long period, kind of like it was pointed out. Uh, earlier in, in insurance. So it's something that I, I mean, so already the organization has been working out for me and I'm pretty happy. Yeah, thank you, Annie. Um, I can definitely echo some of those thoughts. Like Annie, I too am pretty quiet. It might not seem like that for the <laughs> amount of involvement um, so far, but um, to echo Annie's thoughts, um, it, it's been really a great experience. And I too have just opened up a bit and I'm speaking out more. So definitely a great experience. Um, next we'll have Claire. Hi, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. Uh, so I have joined CREW in 2019. I was a student at NYU at the time and I got a scholarship from CREW. So I, I first joined that committee that I had been uh, in touch uh, with uh, throughout the application for the uh, scholarship. So I was a member of the Career Advancement uh, Committee. I really believed in the mission and I um, I, 
I was asked to be on a panel and be a mentor for uh, for students uh, later on uh, uh, during my involvement with that uh, committee, and I really love the opportunity to to have a greater impact on other women and their career in uh, commercial real estate. Um, and this is this is something that I've uh, I. I'm looking for uh, have an impact, and I've 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 gotten a lot of opportunities uh, through my involvement uh, with committees, and so um, on that uh, panel, like the Dick, it was called the Dick Days program. I got to meet other crew members, uh, Barbara being one of them, and. And so when she started this new committee, uh, the ME, uh, Member Engagement Empowerment Committee for crew and asked me to, to join, I was very enthusiastic. And uh, for, for me, that committee worked a little better in like when we were meeting, uh, it, was, uh, it was easier with my schedule. And so I got to be more and more involved and I've really seen the benefit of putting more in and get, you know, getting more opportunities uh, out of it. So uh, that's, I, I was introduced uh, through, you know, the, through the scholarship program and I did not really know what to expect, but uh, it's, been, it's been great uh, so far. Thank you. And I definitely agree with you. The more you put in, the more you get back. Um, up next, we have Nayada. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, how I got involved with Crew New York. So that happened back in uh, September 2020. Uh, Andy Woodleaf introduced me to Crew New York initially, and uh, then she introduced me to Sherry and Julia. Uh, they had uh, started the DEI task force, and uh, I thought that everything that they were doing in terms of diversity, equity, and inclusion was amazing. Uh, myself, I'm a senior compliance manager, and my role is to uh, oversee uh, supplier diversity and workforce diversity efforts nationwide for my company. And uh, I really, you know, enjoyed what, what Sherry and uh, Andis and Julia had done with the DEI workforce. So I started to learn more about the crew, uh, crew New York. I was already involved with uh, various local organizations, uh, but uh, I was also looking for uh, an, uh, an organization with a, with a global reach and uh, knowing what uh, the DI task force was doing and also learning more about Crew New York and Crew Network, uh, you know, I, I made the decision to join and become a member because I thought that will really help me uh, on, the, on a professional level but to enhance my leadership skills, but also uh, at a networking level to meet with uh, uh, MBEs and WBEs who could potentially uh, uh, become partners with us uh, on uh, future land lease projects. And uh, I have to say that uh, the minute I joined Crew New York, uh, all of the programming, the experience has been great. Uh, I'm international, and I have to say that I felt very uh, included. You know, everybody is so inclusive in being on diversity and, and uh, uh, knowing and 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 uh, knowing that everyone is so inclusive that really cares about how new members feel that means a lot to me and i think that's the difference between this organization and other organizations that i've been a member of like intentionally crew members they care about the new members they want to make sure that they are felt you know engaged and inclusive in terms of uh, uh, my current uh, role with Crew New York. I'm the DEI committee chair and I'm uh, an executive board member. So as you can see, I started out as a member uh, and, and uh, I was very engaged with, with uh, DEI task force. That's thanks to Sherry, Andis and Julia. And um, 
and you know I grew out of that role so to speak and now I'm the DEI committee chair and an executive board member and in this role now uh, my uh, my goal is to make sure that I'm helping new members feel as inclusive and uh, uh, help the way I was when I initially you know uh, engaged with Group New York. Thank you, Nayada. And we're definitely going to talk more about that later, like why you chose to, you know, make that move from membership to leadership. Um, but up next, we'll have Rachel. Hi, everyone. Um, so I have been a Crew New York member since 2018. So um, I guess I'm longer than, <laughs> than Annie and Claire, Nayada and Farah. Uh, which is surprising because I thought I was the relative newbie. Um, but uh, you know, when I when I first joined, I was uh, a little bit on the fringe. I participated in programs, but really didn't have um, a lot of relationships with the members until I decided to join the committee. I joined the committee that Barbara was leading, the Crew Network and Member Recognition Committee, to start, and was really really interested in the in in the mission of that committee. Also, in addition, of course, to Crew. Um, more broadly speaking. So I, I became the chair of that committee. Um, and I'm also on the DEI committee. And, and honestly, um, you know, uh, why I joined that committee is, is particularly for that we do not promote ourselves as much as we should. And this is, <laughs> this is a me thing. It's a woman thing. So being on the member recognition committee to kind of promote you know, tell me when you're having a speaking opportunity. Tell me what industry award you've applied for. Give like I'll tell you which 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 awards you should apply for. You know, all of those opportunities was very powerful, and um, and it's just grown and grown. And and you know, the committee the committee work is fantastic. We're broadening the committee um, awards this year. I mean, the the Pre New York awards this year with the DEI award. So it's just really a passion of mine to just um, to just make sure that the women have more visibility in the industry. So thank you. Thank you, Rachel. And last but not least, we have Julie. Hi, I'm Julie Ryman. I'm with the Durst organization. Uh, and I was with Durst previously. I left in 2019, which is when I became um, introduced to crew from another industry mechanical engineering partner who knew Renette Riley through an event. He was like, listen, you got to go and check out crew. And my very first crew event was the summer of 2019. Um, we were in Beth Savante's office actually doing a leading ladies series. And it was a very small intimate group. Um, and I was just stunned that the speaker that day was very, very vulnerable um, in her story, very real and raw in some of the things that happened in her career. Um, and, you know, that's where I really thought like, oh, okay, you know, this is, this is a good place to be, you know, um, people are realistic um, in in sharing and, and really saying what things are like. And that, I think that pretty much sold it. And at that, um, at that event, I met Michelle DiCarlo, uh, who later on that year um, was going to take over programs in 2020. And her and I had had a coffee and I had told her before I had a lot of uh, events background and so there I was as Michelle's chair in uh, January of 2020, uh, COVID hit, you know, we did our, our one, or we did two events, uh, one as the economic forecast and the second one was uh, that luncheon in February. And then it was an insane time for everyone. It was an insane pivot at programs. And thank you, Katarina. I know you're, you know, putting this together without your help. I don't know what we would have done. Um, but there was a couple of weeks leading up to the major pivot that we did going virtual where we would get on calls. And again, I was just, you know, really impressed by the real conversations, you know, because every one of us was involved in a different piece of the business you know, in, in a bit of a panic, in a bit of a pivot, in a bit of trying to see, you know, what was going to happen next. And, and it was a, 
it was a good time for me to get to know people in that way. And, you know, and like everyone has said, it's, it is about what you put into it. Um, and as I laughed when Jennifer was there saying, you know, you can't flake and she's right. You know, <laughs> there's actual things that need to be done. You know, people put a lot of time in to making this work and it's really important that, you know, you, you can make something happen. So um, I'm excited this year to see what, what's going to happen where with, um, I'm the chair of Young Professionals and uh, Farah here, thank you, is our vice chair and, you know, here to announce, you know, we're, we're trying new things. We've sold out our golf event twice, two times, sold out. It's not even happening until uh, Cinco de Mayo. So, um, you know, that, that shows us, you know, listen, we're, we're really ready. We're ready to be back. Thank you, Julie. Um, so to jump right into the rest of our discussion, I'd like for each of you to share one thing that you particularly enjoy about being on a committee or one thing that you gain from your committee involvement, in no particular order. Rachel, Claire, anyone? It's a lot, <laughs> I'll, I'll take this one. You know, it's a lot of fun. Um, in terms of what what we're trying to do in young professionals is, you know, be that glue and that gel so that as women come into the organization that are maybe, you know, starting out to mid career. Um, I myself am not a young professional, um, but this whole idea of like helping to create a network and a gel and a bond between yourselves that can grow through your career. And then for Farah and I to be that piece that helps to link out in what you're needing to maybe members you don't know, um, you know, and again, helping, you know, with speaking opportunities. Rachel's fantastic with that. Thank you, Rachel, for all your hard work that you put into that. So just, you know, being that liaison in terms of how can we help? I think that's, it's, you just, you get so much out of it. Yeah, and I'll just piggyback off that. I mean, we, as, as has been said a bunch of times, there's so many diverse areas of commercial real estate. So I really lean into that in the committee discussions about, you know, different outreach uh, people on the committee have so that, it, you know, my, my background is different from Catherine's. My, but Catherine is my vice chair, uh, Sayer, and she's, uh, she's a broker. I'm sh sorry. She's um, insurance. She does the, um, uh, wealth, the wealth uh, stuff. She's an affiliate member, but th there's there's a lot of diversity even on the committee. So having that um, element for the discussion about uh, you know different ways we can um, advance the, the 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 women in the network and how we're communicating that and all of those individual networks is very diverse. It's it's very spread out. And I don't know how much overlap there is, but I can't imagine there's all that much. <laughs> With it, we have about eight people on the committee and eight different QFCREs, <laughs> so. Thank you, anyone else wanna add anything before we go to the next question? Sure, I, so for me, my experience being, before being very involved in the committee uh, was attending events and I always felt very uh, included, people are easy to approach, all the women in the room want to know what, you know, what you're looking for and how they can help you. And they, you know, quick in making like a connection. And it felt very empowering and it, I felt very included, but it never went beyond the point of like changing a business card. And I was, I was not able to establish any deeper relationships uh, with the, the woman that I had met. And when being involved in a committee, we, you know, we, I get to actually work with other people. Like we, we, you know, we came up with a new program, like the member Mondays uh, for, you know, for the organization. And we, as a team, we worked as a team and came up with all the, the questionnaire and how we're going to reach out to people. And like, we were actually <laughs> kind of working, uh, you know, with 
with like a call every month and and I feel like the connections I'm making out of being involved in the comedy are so much deeper and I get to know these people uh and that feels that feels great that I really I really like uh that and I guess out of it I've gained more um uh, speaking opportunities like like this one you know like and which which is great thanks for sharing claire so the next question here is for our committee chairs um some of you may have already touched on this in your intros but you know if there's anything else that you'd like to add um we'd like to hear about how and why you selected the co committees you chose to lead um, i'll think yeah, um, for me personally, uh, the DEI committee uh, was a very easy choice because I'm already involved with diversity, uh, equity and inclusion at Lendlease. And therefore, you know, being involved uh, with the DEI committee initially was the perfect uh, match for me. Uh, that committee was an opportunity for me to, to meet with uh, like-minded professionals who have had the same uh, uh, the same objectives to advance diversity in commercial real estate, and uh, out obviously there was a lot of brainstorming that happened initially because our uh, uh, our committee was a new committee, so there was a lot of planning uh, that was done, uh, and now we are at a uh, you know at an action stage where we actually need to implement what was originally planned. Uh, I, I have to say uh, that uh, out of that committee, uh, you know, I was a committee member, but I also uh, 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 I also gained friends because I, you know, I started learning more and more about the committee members and, and uh, some friendships, you know, uh, grew out of that relationship, of, of those relationships. Thanks, Nayada. And the next question I have is for our vice chairs. Um, what made you want to decide to become more involved transitioning from being a member into a leadership role? I, I can take that. Uh, so I'm the vice chair on the me committee, Barbara's uh, committee, Barbara being the, the chair. And I, Barbara manages to like it, it's 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 quite different to lead a team of volunteer than it is to leave a team, you know, uh, at at work in getting people very engaged and active. It's it, it says a lot from you know a person's leadership skills to have uh, such a large committee uh, actively involved, and I I really wanted to learn from her, and I when she reached out uh you know with saying she was looking for a vice chair and extending you know the opportunity to a couple of people in her community I was like this is my opportunity to to learn the, the skills from her and also have a better understanding of the organization by being you know involved at a different uh level so that was that was really kind of like what uh, triggered my my interest, and uh, I always you know always looking to to learn more and being more engaged. Yeah, I definitely agree. Barbara has been a phenomenal mentor for me as well. Um, Annie, would you like to add anything? Yeah, I mean, uh, for me, part of membership, it, I, it's to review the applications and everything. So I love that I get that first look before it even goes up to the board. And it also, again, pushes me to connect with other members to try to get, a lot of times we have to, you know, help people find sponsors since we, you know, we're not always, well, we're not in person yet. But so it, it also leads me to, all right, let's connect you with this person. So it, again, it gets me out of my comfort zone and that's a place I feel like I need to be right now. So, and, and it, it is, you do learn a lot of what it takes to put together an event, even though um, for membership, we only put the Discover um, crew event at the end of the year, but it, it shows you kind of like the background of how things really work. And it's, it's interesting. Yes. Thank you. And so, just, so, oh, oh, 
So Sorry, I was just going to mention that one of the cool things that Annie does on, she's part of the Young Professionals Committee, but she also, with looking over membership, she connects directly to our committee. And then she also has like a second bond with people as they come on to our committee by being part of both. So thank you for doing that, Annie. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Um, so something that often arises in volunteer organizations are the concerns about the time commitment required when serving in such roles. Did any of you have the same concern and do you have any tips for how you manage your time commitment to crew? I think I'm in a unique position. Oh. Oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> You can go, Claire. It's okay. I'll go after. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sorry. So, you know, being part of the committee and uh, coming up with the new program I had mentioned before, the member Mondays, we did dedicate, you know, a couple of hours uh, here and there and before um, really um, accepting the role as a vice chair, I wanted to spoke with Barbara and understanding the time commitment because I do have a full-time job. I have two young children. Uh, and I was like, I, I cannot, you know, dedicate more than like X time, you know, per month or, you know, uh, and it was really about uh, talking things through and letting um, other people know how much time I could dedicate and then making sure, you know, I, I like to think of myself as a very efficient person. So I, you know, when I I, I tackle something, you know, quickly and uh, and re return it uh, on time, and then, you know, and and kind of move on. It's like kind of like small tasks, so it's easy to fit uh, in my in my day. So that was definitely a worry, um, but it's it's been working out very uh, smoothly for me. Perfect. Um, I love that. At least for membership, we have two vice chairs. So it's a lot of tag teaming if one of us is out or one of us can't. Do it. So like I said, I'm in a unique situation because I feel like there's three of us to go around. And that to me, at least time wise, it, it's amazing. So I love it. Sarah, if you don't mind, I, I'd like to interject so I can make sure we get um, a, a, an audience chat question or two. Um, so one of the questions is kind of a two parter. Um, and thank you, Angela. It's from Angela. The first part uh, has to do with you know, do does any of you have any suggestions or ideas for, you know, effective digital networking among our members for career opportunities? You know, we are all looking forward to emerging from our, our home and office caves and, and getting back into seeing each other in person, but we are going to continue with a mixed platform. So, um, uh, Farah or any of your panelists want to address that digital networking um, suggestions, particularly focusing on career opportunities. I, I would point out before you answer, one of the places to look, Angela, is on the um, Crew Biz Members Forum, uh, because and particularly if you get the daily or the weekly uh, announcements, because there's always a section on new careers there, I mean, new jobs there. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I can start off. Um, so for me personally, as I mentioned during my introduction, I, I came to Crew with a very specific goal. Um, I want to make a transition out of property management into asset management. Um, and I knew that I would have to step my game up, meet people, build my network. And I've been doing that since I've been a part of the organization. Um, for me, it's more so about, you know, attending as many events as I can. They've all been virtual, which has been great. Um, but also following up on LinkedIn. Um, I use the Krubra's um, through network as well to connect with others who may not be in the chapter who's in my local market. So currently right now I'm based out of Westchester County, um, but I live in Connecticut and I actually met a woman who has been really great. I can't speak too much on it right now, but I'll have an update next time. Um, but you know, using Crew Biz to connect with her has led to an amazing opportunity for me, which I can't wait to share. Um, 
um, later on, but uh, you know, I would suggest just really using the tools that the organization provide to us. Um, there's so much value in them and just connecting and talking to people, show up to as many events as you can. I know we all have- You mean digitally, time Sarah? Did, Yeah, did digitally as well. I mean, I haven't been, you know, I've been to one in-person crew event that was a holiday party and probably a couple of the pop-up chats during the summer, but I personally haven't gained much from a ton of in-person stuff because I joined while we were doing lots of virtual things. And, you know, personally for me, I've, I've expanded my network so much in the past 10 months, you know, virtually um, that it, it's just been amazing. And I think even, you know, as we go and transition into more in-person events, we'll still have the digital platform that you guys can benefit from. Does anyone else have a, a thought on that? Yeah, I mean, I just, I do the jo the hashtag job alerts on LinkedIn. So whenever, and, and my network is pretty big on LinkedIn. So I get a lot of stuff in crew, out of crew, but low, you know, to this region. So I'm always sharing those, whether they're junior, senior, in between, whichever part of commercial real estate, internships, all that, just hashtag job alert there. And also just going to the events, just the online events and just connecting with people that way, mostly through LinkedIn, as you're seeing, seeing their information. The other part of that question is about strengthening the crew uh, presence on Long Island. Now, I know there are a number of you who live there and, and some who actually have offices there. Um, and this isn't a conversation we can have here and now, but if there's interest in it, you might want to start that thread on the members only forum or let me know and I'll circulate the list of names uh, among those who, who raise their hand. Uh, we're going to follow uh, this up with uh, the um, the registration list and contact information and the recording. So if you want to connect with those who, you know, say have a, you know, live or work on Long Island, that may be a place to start as well. Um, Farah, we, we don't have much time, but if you want to try to ask uh, your last question to one or two people. Yes, absolutely. So our, my final question for, our panelists here is what single piece of advice would you give to crew New York members about being active in the chapter via committee involvement? And first two people who volunteer get the answer. Just do it. Yeah. Just do it. Very good. Thank Just you. I love your brevity, Julie. At, like bring it to the table and just do it. Just jump I in. love your brevity. Yes. Anyone else? One other panelist? I would say be authentic with your ideas as much as you can, because that's important. It adds to diversity. So be authentic. That would be my advice. Okay. So thank you, Farah. Thank you, Annie. Thank you, Claire, Nayada, Julie, and Rachel. Um, okay, before closing out, um, please, um, check out our, our uh, April 21st global event on navigating gender and cultural differences in negotiation. It's featuring a global panel of leading uh, experts in their fields from Crew UK, Crew Toronto, Crew New York, uh, and uh, Crew India, and excuse me, India, and the India representative is also an anchor on their uh, premier um, real estate India programming. New members, uh, please stay tuned for your member inclusion circle invitation and please join us. Um, anyone who is interested in hearing more about a, a particular committee or all committees or wants to join a committee, please let me know. Um, many thanks for your membership and interest in Crew New York. And don't forget to get a return on your investment in Crew New York. Please become more engaged. And other than that, I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you again all. Great. I, I, I learned a lot and I appreciate the discussion. Take care, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Barbara. Bye. Thank you. This was great. Thank you. Have a great weekend, everybody. Too. Yes, indeed. It's only Wednesday, though. Oh. It's only Wednesday. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Be ready. Get ready for the weekend. <laughs>